Play to Potential podcast. First of all, thanks so much for making the time for the My first, first of the series, uh, Play to Potential Fireside, Fireside Chat series. Uh, maybe for the purpose of people who uh, <laughs> joined, joined this webinar, a quick background to Neeraj. Uh, Neeraj spent his first few years uh, in his career in oil and gas, believe it or not, at Shrumbaja and Engineers India Limited. And then uh, he moved to strategy consulting and was with BCG and McKinsey in the US and Singapore, respectively. And subsequently, he spent 15 years at Egon Zender, which is where our paths overlapped. Uh, he, uh, he helped companies recruit CEOs and board members. And a lot of my learning and growth happened uh, with Neeraj as a colleague. So forever grateful for all, all the wisdom and all the mentorship. And uh, after 15 years, despite having a few years of a lucrative runway left at Egon Zender, he had the courage and he quit the partnership and started uh, Wisdom Circle with a vision of connecting senior experienced professionals who are typically over 50 and retired with the world of meaningful opportunities that leverage the lifetime of wisdom and experience. From an educational perspective, he has a master's in petroleum engineering from Stanford and an MBA from Chicago Booth School of Business. And just if, as a lot of you know, I'm a student of transitions. Uh, I felt it would be lovely to listen and learn from Neeraj, both from his experiences, but also from his vantage point of helping many senior professionals stay relevant past their 50s, 60s, and beyond. And a couple of housekeeping announcements before uh, I welcome Neeraj and kick it off. Uh, while we'd mentioned that we'll do the session for an hour, if there is interest, we can go on for a bit longer. Neeraj has been graceful enough to be flexible with his time. And if you have any questions for us, do drop them in the Q&A box as they occur to you. We'll pause around maybe the 20, 30 minute mark, take some questions, and then take some more questions in the end. But, uh, Neeraj, thank you so much for making the time. Welcome, welcome to the P2P Fireside Chat. Uh, thank you, and thank you for inviting me, Deepak. Uh, it's a privilege, and especially to be on your first uh, Fireside Chat. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, just, just for the purpose of listeners, do you want to sort of spend a couple of minutes talking about what you're building at Wisdom Circle, Neeraj? And then I'd love to get into your journey and understand uh, uh, some of the transitions. Uh, so, no, thank you. So, so at Business Circle, we are essentially building a tech platform to, or rather creating a marketplace for people who post-retirement want to do, continue to do meaningful things. I think that's mm -hmm. essentially what we're doing. We started mm -hmm. with India. We are trying to, we will go global sometime later this year. Mm -hmm. um, how, do, how else do I define what I'm doing? Hi, so, you know, I think what we realize is, you know, as you get older, none of us, in fact, most of us want to step away from this sort of career track. Mm. So we are, we are, we are trying to build non career track opportunities, if you will, right? So some people say, look, are you doing a gig platform for retirees? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, our spotlight is on the retirees as opposed to organizations. So we are trying mm -hmm. to solve for what retirees want mm -hmm. as opposed to what organizations have always wanted in, in people. So, so that's mm. what we are doing. We are at businesscircle.com. So, um, and by the way, one of, um, and there's a, there's a lot of story behind why wisdom circle is that, but I'll, I'll, I'll give the, I can ask myself questions and I can no, no, answer no. them, but I tell you. <laughs> I'd love, maybe, yeah. Yeah, maybe we, yeah. let, let's, uh, cover that. Why wisdom, talk to us about the story behind the name and then, uh, we'll, we'll go to your journey. So the, so let me give you the story. Well, so the story behind the name is, um, uh, you know, we spoke to a lot of people who, so first of all, people hate to be called old. Hmm. Most of us, old, elderly, silver, <laughs> gray, you know, so we, hmm. so I think the, so the way it started is that we tried to figure out, um, you know, what word uh, would represent this generation. So in fact, at that time, I was reading this book called Visor, uh, hmm. which is a, a professor, an Indian origin professor uh, in California called Dilip Yeste, who's written this fantastic book. And hmm. I think that's where this sort of word wisdom, which we've always talked about, was stuck. And then a couple of my friends who sort of wrote my initial check actually then suggested it. He said, you know, Wisdom Circle would be a good name. And then we, of course, tried to look at whether the domain name was available. Et cetera. There's another friend of mine who actually said, you know what? Why don't we call them the Wisdom Generation? Hmm. And you, say, you know, we say Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z. So in fact, we've coined this word called the Wisgen, um, hmm. and therefore the Wisdom Generation. 
Um, so that's one. And I think the other side is we actually have a mascot, believe it or not. And the mascot uh-huh. is a is a turtle. Okay. Uh, so so that, that I, I'm not sure if you can see it. Yes, right? we can. So that's that's yes. my teacher. So so this is a, a gender neutral uh-huh. turtle. Okay. Right. And and this comes from the Aesop fable of the hare and the tortoise. And um, well, you know, if most of us know the hare and the tortoise story, right? About how the tortoise is, uh, you know, lives longer, is wise. Um, doesn't care a damn about the hair um, and just operates at its, own, uh, at its own pace. So that's how we came up with uh, the mascot, essentially saying that look, we are solving for people who want to operate at their own pace, you know, one day mm. a week, two hours a day and the like. So anyway, mm. so that's, that's a little bit of the context and the story of the mascot and the name. Lovely. So let's go back in time, maybe a year or two, Neeraj, uh, you know. Uh, By the way, I must tell you, this is, yes, this is the first time I'm ever being interviewed in my life. Right. I mean, as, as in on on video or on this thing, and you you and I have sort of talked about it. Where sometimes you said, "Yeah, for a video, banado," and I've always been shy. So I think you've gotten me out of this sort of shell, if you will. Shall so it's, it's the first time for a, both of us. Then, so I'm, then. Uh, I'm a little nervous also. Huh? Just so you know, I'm not sure if you can. And, and for me personally, <laughs> most of my conversations are without any audience. So this is the first time I'm having a conversation which is recorded with a few people in audience. So it's it's a first. So let's go back to your journey, Neeraj. Huh. Uh, maybe a uh, couple of years, uh, you, you might be a better judge of when is, when is a good time to rewind too. But I'm, uh, I want to go back to the phase where you're a, you're a partner at Egon's and uh, things are going well. Commercially, it's meaningful. Uh, you know, there's a non-trivial check that, uh, that comes in at the end of every month. Um, and then, you know, uh, you took a longest sabbatical, right? So maybe a sabbatical is a good place to start. Talk to us a little bit about just that phase, what, what was going on? Uh, what did you do in the sabbatical? And, and, and sort of walk us through that, that uh, phase. Uh, and let me tell you, this, this, I took the sabbatical, I think almost two years ago. Hmm. Um, actually, a little more than two years ago, two and a half years ago. So this is, um, um, so, so how does it sync up with COVID? COVID? Okay. Uh, so it's basically, so I decided to take uh, a sabbatical. And then COVID happened. I still took the sabbatical. You know, people Understood. will tell me, "Abhi kool era sabbatical." You know, you can still get paid the sabbatical. You want anyway be able to do anything? I said, "Nahi, I'm going to take a sabbatical because the, okay. the board had approved the sabbatical." So when I took the mm-hmm. sabbatical, I think it was more of, you know, essentially a pause. It was 15 years that he gone, and I was sort of thinking about what next. Um, and and in a way, it was if I went back, I would recommit to the firm. I think that's essentially was my break. Think, am I ready to recommit the next? Understand. Five years, ten years uh, to the firm, and then what happened was very interesting. And uh, I'm not sure you can probably see a motorcycle at the back, right? So there's, yes, there's a motorcycle about. thing here. Just I, about. I got a bunch of uh, so I got a bunch of motorcycle thingies at home. So I've always wanted to learn how to ride and ride. I, you know, such for my scooter we used to have, but motorcycle can be slightly easy. So during COVID, I went in. There's another colleague of my, a friend of mine, right across the road. He said, "Yeah, let's go buy a motorcycle." He's ten years older than I am. He said, "When you say motorcycle, you're talking about those big." A motorcycle, nice. Royal Enfield. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Royal Enfield, classic 350, okay. right? So okay. the Ali okay. all very expensive. So I think it was just buying the motorcycle. Mm-hmm. Again, you know, midlife, call it whatever. I think this sort of 50 is this problem, right? I mean, it's, the midlife stuff is real. And when you um, went for sabbatical, so, had you crossed the 50 line or you were sort of hovering around the line? I was, I was hovering around it, right? Yes. So, um, and it's like, you know, kya hone wala hai, etc. But, and then COVID happened in, um, so the motorcycle was a very interesting thing because the roads were empty. So we could learn how to drive, uh, how to ride, um, and you could still be, you know, keep distance. Uh, I've always, you know, been in the car and being driven. You're spoiled right? when you're in the car and you're being driven. So I think for me, the biggest thing was going back to call it being grounded again and going back to roots by, mm. by you know, getting this classic C50. I took off the back seat. I said, Meko ek seat the year. And how long was the sabbatical uh, for? Just to get tactical? Six months. Six months. Six months. Huh? It's not like a two weeks, mm. one month. It's not, it's a, it's a reasonable period of time. I was, and so the first couple of months I was like, Kya karu? you know, and in a way, you know, you start already understanding what it could be if you were retired, right? It, mm. In a way it's sort of, so, so there is that, you know, for me, it was, what does it feel to be retired? And therefore, what can you do? You know, we all say we could enjoy life. You could do everything. And literally I had six months. I could do anything I wanted, right? I could read books. I could get up when I wanted. Mm. Um, so, so that is one piece. The other piece that impacted uh, a lot of this, and I'll tell you what happened during this time. So I actually read a lot of books on longevity. Mm-hmm. Longevity, eight signs. I, I took a bunch of courses. Stanford Continuing Education has a bunch of these interesting courses. I took a course from, uh, uh, you know, the late life brain. 
aging, <laughs> dementia, right? You know, I just did a lot of this random stuff. Also, just to understand what, what is this, you know, do you really need to live longer? What does it mean to live longer? So that in a way sort of triggered a lot of emotions on what was going on in the world. So I was reading, I was riding my motorcycle. And then by that time, I grew a beard. Right? So this is Santa Claus kind of looking. Uh, and I, I will not name the politician that I'm sometimes called, which I'm not, just to sort of be cl- to clarify. But you know, there was he this, who shall um, not be named. He who <laughs> shall not be named. Well, I thought that was, uh, and I actually when the someone told me that the first time I shaved, I said, "I'm going to say but then it grew again. Um, but so it was a motorcycle with the with the beard. It was these books and these courses, um, and then also I grade very early in life, um, and in a way, you know, I remember I even uh, there was a period when the RTO opened for a driver's license, and I had to redo my driver's license. And I had white hair and I put on a mask and I went to the RTO. I was in and out in 15 minutes because the guy said, yes, sir, hai. Inko pehle jane do. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and that sort of, and then, you know, you start really getting, and then of course I was getting discounts at pharmacies. 20% was normal. They were even asking for my ID and I would get a discount. Uh, so all of it came together uh, during, okay. during that sabbatical for me. And I, but by the way, at that time I was not, I mean, I, whatever I wanted to do, I still wanted to do inside Egon And, mm-hmm. So I actually went back to Egon Zender Forces of Radical. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I think it was um, six months later, I turned 50. After when you were in the firm? When you were in the firm? When I was in the firm. Okay. And it was that week of turning 50, cold was still around. It was sort of that. And I remember, you know, a bunch of my friends, uh, who are quite a few are sort of same age or older, who said, yeah, Neeraj, you know, you keep talking about doing something, but you're on this treadmill, you're sort of doing this thing and you're working damn hard and we never see you. Then stop talking about it. Right? Do mm-hmm. something or, or don't talk about it. So literally it was that week I, I went and put in my feet. Wow. It took me about seven months, seven months to leave. But uh, but that that's the story. I think of wow. other oh, So you, so you came too. back, spent some time and then there was another trigger and uh, you put in the papers. And, and at the time you the started... Trigger was, your... The trigger was mm-hmm. turning 50. Turning mm-hmm. 50 was the trigger. And it's like, shit, 50 um, You know, what's up? And, you know, and also, mm-hmm. of course, lots of other things. Right? So the... Uh, there's mm-hmm. a lot of signs behind that decision, which happened very quickly, which is, you know, kids leaving home, mm-hmm. uh, you know, doing your financial calculation and saying, does it make sense? Mm-hmm. Uh, and the like. Mm-hmm. And at the time of uh, putting your papers, did you have a clear sense of what what next or was it sort of in a vacuum? <laughs> you know, it was, I wanted to do something in this space of aging and such. And, um, mm-hmm. and honestly, so let me put it this way. So this thought on doing something for, the second half of life for people who are retiring actually got seeded much, much, much earlier because, mm-hmm. you know, in, in your profession as an executive search consultant, a lot of people reach out to you and say, look, True. I'm about to retire. What should I do? Yes. You know, it was kind of sad because you know, a lot of us actually, the only thing you could talk about is, yeah, you could get onto a board or you could do an advisory role. And, and there are only so many board and advisory roles out there. Whereas the population that wants to continue staying meaningfully engaged is only increasing. Mm. And like, even for my closest friends, I really couldn't help them. And and I was feeling bad. I said, yeah, look, I, I sit in a position of privilege where we are essentially matchmakers between uh, the people who want talent and the people who have talent. And, and even then, there is not enough roles for people who have talent to be absorbed as they get older. Uh, and this whole notion, ki, yeah, dekho, main 55, you know, how, no one who's going to hire me. So I think that was always playing on my mind. And and I, I sort of, you know, was trying to figure out if I could build something at Egon. And in fact, when I was leaving, my colleagues at Egon, and they were like, well, you know, why don't we build a retirement vertical and you build it? Mm-hmm. And then I think at that mm-hmm. point I realized, so we have, we were 300 partners. I said, look, I don't want 300 <laughs> partners telling me what, you know, basically people like you and me, right? I mean, we're all opinionated. We kind of have a view on everything. Yeah. So I, um, I didn't want more people like me telling me what to do and what not to do. So I think I said, I think, you know, you have done it. You know, you have done it. That was sort of the... Got okay. it. Sorry, and I keep moving into Hindi. No, 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 no. That's that's just absolutely fine. I think most of the people tuning in are from India who who understand Hindi, so that's not a problem. Um, I, I want to go back to the the, the the phase between you quitting Agon Zender and you starting Wisdom Circle, right? Uh, and ju- and just to add to what you said, I find uh, given some of my conversations around transitions with some of the thinkers and some of the people who made transitions, I think it's. I've also realized that, uh, you know, the, the metaphor that sort of appealed to me the most is that of a trapeze, right? Very often early in our journeys, we wait for to cling on to the next trapeze before we let go of the current one. 
But once you cross a certain point, 40, 50 or beyond, you need to just let go of the trapeze and experience a little bit of a free fall and then hope that, uh, you know, something will emerge and you will build something. So so um, I'm curious about the sort of the, if I may say, nothingness. Of course, you were, an idea was brewing to Wisdom Circle. And more specifically, you know, what are the different things you might have said no to? You know, there are possibilities are infinite, right? What you could have done at that point. So talk to us a little bit about just the journey from, putting your papers to the sort of the altar that wisdom circle has taken? You know, that's, that's a good question. I think the, honestly, I think my, my first sort of feeling was I was scared, right? I, and I was scared because as you said, you know, I come from a middle-class upbringing. They're so used to a salary at the end of the month. Uh, you know, yes, you want to be an entrepreneur. I've been wanted, you know, I've been wanting to do entrepreneurial things a lot. And I think Ivan Zender, for example, gave me a lot of opportunities to be an entrepreneur, right? open the Bangalore office, lead the industrial practice. And there's a lot of things we did, but it was always, you were always protected, right? Your salary to RET, right? Mm -hmm. And I think, so for, for me, the first thing was, have I taken the right financial call? Mm -hmm. Right? And because that has an implication on family, it has an implication on sort of just the people, you know, my parents are in their 80s, my my children are in college, the ones about to go to college was in college. Uh, my wife is a homemaker. She used to be a school teacher. So I think it was just this whole burden of uh, care and, you know, am I doing the right thing? Um, and I think that uh, honestly, you know, it's always your spouse who sort of steps up and they always do, right? It's like sort of, they get you know, what is the, mm. um, so, so I think the first thing we did was actually the financial calculation more than anything mm. else. Just literally mm. sitting down and saying, how much are we going to spend? How much do we have? Do we have enough for children's education? And then literally sitting down with the kids and saying, well, this is what we're doing. In fact, what I was pleasantly surprised by, which I didn't expect is suddenly the, you know, the kids started looking at me and saying, and yeah, this guy has guts, man. <laughs> this guy's like, you know, what's, um, mm. because and suddenly, you know, my younger one also once came, came up to me and he says, you know, dad, don't worry. We'll figure out how to fend for ourselves. Just as long as you can pay for college. Mm. <laughs> so I think sometimes when you get these uh, sort of emotional support, spoke to True. my parents, they were shocked. They were like, yeah, pagal hai. It's a mm. hai. you know, what's wrong with you? And then uh, I think my dad was like, oh, beta, you know, karo. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, so there were all these mixed things and I think, you know, friends, friend support. And then, so that's how it started. So that was the first emotion. The second emotion was a, a very positive one where a lot of friends started coming up and saying, look, Neeraj, I think what you're doing is gutsy. I think mm -hmm. we would have loved to do it, but we just can't. Can we um, be a part of Wisdom Circle? Can we support you in any way? Can we make you introductions? Can we mm -hmm. fund you? And mm -hmm. I think that sort of started giving you a lot more courage to do mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And literally, I think my first people who wrote my sort of first initial checks were all friends who sort of said, yeah, I wish I could do it, but you're doing it. And here is my participation in the journey that I may have wanted to do, but you're doing it on all our behalf. I understand. I understand. Um, all we say, are lots of emotions, I think. Understood. And, Understood. and I think the bigger, the bigger emotion, by the way, was leaving. It was very, very difficult for me. I, mean, I can you know, imagine. You know it. You and I have done it. It's, just, I can it's imagine. such a fantastic firm and it's just very difficult to leave. And also, uh, in a way, you're operating in the power play, right? If I may use a cricket metaphor, you've built all the relationships. You're sort of, in a way, you've done all the hard work. And then, in a way, the last... Several years, five, six, ten years. Uh, this uh, is when you make the money, actually. Uh, that's that's when <laughs> the money really, works, no? True, uh, true, true. So to sort of uh, leave when you're, it's it's like uh, retiring when you're batting at ninety-five, right? Five five runs away from the hundred. So in a way, <clears throat> that, that, that that's why I I wonder. But, but one of the points you mentioned uh, the role of the spouse, right? For example, in my case, about seven years back when I moved on from the firm, of course, it was a different uh, phase of life and phase of career, etc. But one of the things that helped building on what you said was the conversation I'd had with my spouse, Kamini. And the fact that we sort of said, let's keep a stop loss. You know, uh, we said, uh, let's give ourselves 18 months and let's see how it goes. We will never know if we don't try. And then worst case scenario after 18 months, for some reasons, if sort of cash flows from being on your own aren't quite uh, making sense, then you come back to the treadmill. And and I think sometimes it's just that, mm -hmm. uh, that nudge and that sort of comfort at the time of taking the leap, which makes all the difference, right? So, uh, totally. totally. That, that, that's a very middle class way of thinking, no? I mean, I have mm. the same thing. Oh, we jump with one foot in the water and one this, and you're absolutely right. I think the, see, but it, I think the one difference, however, Deepak, what I may say is, 
So when you cross 50 and you're on the other side, mm. you're not afraid anymore, honestly. I think mm. once you've done your financial calculations a little bit, see, because you're not worried about career anymore. You're like, yeah, I, I don't have to prove anything to anybody anymore, except as long as my family believes in me, as long as my friends believe in me, I really don't need anyone else's, um, you know, acceptance of what I'm doing. So I think that was number one. Uh, I think the other was, I actually, like, for example, Egon Hunter uh, still tells me that, look, if I, I can ever go, you know, if I want to go back, I can always go back and they'll always have a place for me. But in fact, I didn't want that. And I think, in fact, I told, I, I deliberately told people I am not coming back because I wanted to make sure that I put the pressure on myself to make sure I don't have an out. I agree. Because for me, therefore, I have, I have moved from income statement to balance sheet. I think that's sort of my way of explaining what my life post 50 is. I think mm. income statement ho gaya, ab kuch kar, purposeful karna hai, balance sheet banani hai. Now balance sheet does have money in it, right? Mm. But balance sheet has much more purpose in it. Mm. Same uh, old, so it's a, I tell people, you, I'm mm. sure, I'm sure a lot of thinking has gone into that uh, distillate, distant synthesis. But uh, talk to us a little bit more about what you have in mind when you say p and Both, I guess you're talking about financial and non-financial, right? When you say this, it's, it's yeah. tangible and intangible. So just uh, expand on that for us. So it's, a, it's a good question. Man, you ask good questions. I think that so ha, so income statement is tankha aari hai, cash flow aara hai, so income statement cash flow. So because that's what all our life is about, right? Are you earning enough? Do you have enough? You know, is your salary mm-hmm. more than your expenses? So that whole mindset of what are you earning? What are you maybe saving? Where are you investing and the like? Mm-hmm. The balance sheet was, yeah, they were egg din, you know, and this, by the way, for me was COVID. COVID opened up my eyes to say, look, shit can happen anytime. Mm. You know, we all keep talking about, you know, ek din ye karenge, ek din wo karenge. we will do this when we retire. We do this. I said, yeah, you know, what if we never, what if I never get to retire? What if something happens? What if, you know, I don't want to be lying there saying, yeah, you know, socha tha, kar si pai. Mm. I think this is, you know, I, I once, I remember I'm a chemical engineer. I said, my petrol pump khulunga. You know, one day I said, my, you know, I will aggregate, uh, you know, kabadis. Uh, mm. well, none of that worked, right? Um, I was much younger. But now I think it was a, a much more solid idea. I knew I could execute. I had a lot more friends and networks to do it. So the balance sheet for me was about a more purposeful life. right? So mm. I keep telling people I'm a for-profit company with a social purpose. And that to me is balance sheet. And by the way, I will build a billion dollar company. right? I, for me, it's not about the... The, the if, it's the when. And this is what I tell myself and therefore my team. And, and for me, the number is a proxy to, I want to build a self-sustaining organization that does good for the world. That mm-hmm. is self-sustaining where even after me, it still continues because it impacts the, the, the millions of people who we hopefully will get to touch. You know, I don't want to impact 100 people, 1,000 people. I was doing that at EOS Center. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of us in the service business were. So then we said, look, why don't we build a tech product which can actually handle more volume. We can actually make much more changes in the world, but, uh, you know, so anyway, so for me, the, the that's my income statement balance sheet Got it. review. And so, and therefore, you know, it's also saying here, I'm not in it to figure out whether I can use this money to buy, you know, a better house, better car, better clothes. I mean, that stuff is done. You know, I think when you, mm-hmm. when you ask most people who are 50, they'll be like, yeah, ho gaya, wo, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and, and it's a very interesting number, this 50 thing. Now, let's now let me sort of get you to wear the hat of the founder of Wisdom Circle, who has visibility to several people who are probably going through fifties and sixties and sort of uh, going through this journey of staying relevant as they as they cross these uh, as these uh, cross these points uh, in time. So, talk to us about what changes, Neeraj. Uh, you know, uh, when you when you turn into fifties and sixties, one I mean, one thing. Uh, uh, when people uh, shared their questions as they signed up for this webinar, one of the questions that came uh, very often was, there seems to be a sudden drop in the perception of your ability to add value. You know, call it ageism, call it whatever bias. But suddenly there's an, uh, at least a perception that, uh, you know, your uh, your ability to add value is significantly depreciated. But, but that's just one of the points. But I, I'd be curious to hear what are the different things you observe as people cross these uh, points in time? You know, so it's a good question. And there are two sides to this, right? So one is mm. uh, what people who are aging feel. And, mm. and, you know, some of us or most of us on this, uh, because a lot of us don't feel we're old, right? It's Correct. quite interesting. So my, my, it's interesting. So my dad was 85. Okay. Mm. So my, my mom, so he lives in Faridabad. So my, my mom once told my dad, his, uh, 
you know, my boa has moved to this um, uh, sort of, you know, whether is not one of those communities where a lot of the older folks live, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. not an old age home, but a community. I hear you. Uh, Antara ka, this thing or something. So she tells my dad, ki, we should also, you know, move close to your sister. And, yeah. and his first reaction is, I don't want to live with Buddha. Mm. Right? I don't want to live with older people. So my wife, uh, my mom tells my my dad, yeah, but you're also old. So you're like 85. Like, yeah, I'm old. I'm not old, but I'm not old. He's at 85, he has a hearing aid. You know, he's sort of... So I think this this whole feeling, yeah, the world may look at us as old, but we don't feel we are old. Hmm. Right? And we still have the energy, especially if you're in sound mind and good physical health. This whole notion that you can't do it. Now, yes, we slow down, yes. But, you know, the wisdom, knowledge still stays, right? This experience of a lifetime, the stuff you've learned stays. So that's the perception, I think, for most of us. That we, like, I, if you ask me and someone tells me my age, and I'm like, yeah, I don't feel this way. In fact, I have friends who are 60 plus, they're like, yeah. You know, we don't feel 60. You know, we always look at people mm-hmm. who are 60 and say, yes, they're old, right? So mm-hmm. I think there's, there's that feeling. The second, I think from an outside-in perspective, unfortunately, the world, you know, the more, it's a, it's a very India problem specifically because we have more younger people than, than older people right mm-hmm. now. But I think mm-hmm. that, that dynamic is also going to change. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that ageism thing, I mean, not only here, but around the world that exists, right? And a lot of it has to do with um, the belief that work is only done by activity and energy mm-hmm. as opposed to the brain and wisdom, right? So mm-hmm. the balance between the two. Um, mm-hmm. And I think where, what we are trying to do is try to remind everyone, you know, everyone knows. We're just reminding everybody that, look, there is so much time affluence of wisdom mm-hmm. uh, that exists that is being underutilized. Um, and, and then therefore coming back to your question, so what we did was we actually went out when we first started last year, we went out and interviewed like about 200 people deep dive right around the country. I think we found a couple of things. One. And what sorts of, maybe talk about the, the 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 type of sample you had, what kinds of people did you go and talk to for the purpose of the listeners? So, uh, so the, so we talked to people between the age of 55 to 70. There were some who were older as well, uh, but from all types of, professional backgrounds. Mm-hmm. We did not talk to businessmen. We did not talk to, mm. um, uh, you know, people who anyway continue working till permit, till they have permission. If people were, who were employed time. in some shape or form. Correct. Mm. Professional mm. viewers. Mm. And, and there, you know, we talked to people from public sector banks. We talked to people in the armed forces. We talked to people from the private sector. We talked to, and across the board, mm. the, the, the biggest stress that they were carrying was meaning. Right? Hmm. Who am I? What? What am I relevant anymore? So the word, the one word that sort of synthesized everything for us was this feeling of, or lack thereof, of relevance. Hmm. So that was that was hmm. one big word. And I think the, in fact, I, I tell people, I said, you know, I and the other realization was a, so a couple of things, right? One, we realized that a lot of people who are middle class, hard working, and we know this, right? There's just a validation that. You know, we unfortunately in the Indian context at least do not uh, inculcate too many hobbies. Uh, mm. We don't, you know, unlike in the West, you know, we don't, you know, have things we do for ourselves. We always sort of focus on the family. And I think what that does is suddenly you find yourself retired. You know, you've lost your social network. You've lost um, uh, sort of this this feeling of relevance because. Mm. Uh, suddenly the chair isn't there anymore, you know, and I'm telling other, you know, again, don't quote me on this because if my mom sees this video, she'll kill me. Um, but my mom, you know, like, for example, my dad, like civil engineer, 40 years of working, <laughs> etc. Uh, suddenly, whenever my mom sees my dad not doing anything, she's like, I say, oh, you're bindi gato. And, and this poor man, I mean, he's a civil engineer, done all his life, he's built building, roads. I mean, you talk to him, even today he can sort of make a structural drawing. The man is sitting there with his, you know, um, uh, uh, and, and cutting bindi. Right? So this is this is the wisdom and again, no disrespect to bindi cutting, but I think the, um, the, the, the matching of what people are capable of mm. with uh, fitting it in the world. And, and even, even there, uh, um, I, I, my father worked in one bank, public sector bank, Indian bank for 40 years, right? I, I, I think there are two kinds of professions, right? One is 
a profession where you're employed for life, right? Whether it's the armed forces, my father-in-law is a retired army officer or bank or civil services or maybe medicine, uh, I wonder. But I'm saying there's a, there's a cadre of professions where things like looking for a job, uh, losing your job, making your CV, you know, that, that whole muscle is completely undeveloped, right? So in a way, you sort of, right. you sort of go all the way to 40 and, and then you come to a hard stop. And the other is, let's say, people in the private sector, people like you and me, who've changed a few jobs, at least who understand what the marketplace of work looks like. Do you do you see this, uh, you know, in terms of how people experience that transition? Do you see a difference in the way the, these two clusters uh, experience it? No, I think absolutely. I, I think you've sort of nailed that. And I think there is, so the public sector or anyone or government services, et cetera, is a very difficult transition. Armed forces is an even more difficult transition. Mm. So we've been fortunate. I mean, we've recently signed an MOU with the Indian Air Force. We've done one with the Indian Navy. And we're mm -hmm. uh, you know about to do one with the Indian Army, or at least having a conversation around it. It's a very different. So they actually need a lot more uh, calibration or recalibration to the civilian world, right? So there is, mm. and a lot of them do, especially in the private sector. But you know, one of the things we're finding, which is very interesting, which I didn't uh, realize before, uh, so one is the role of children mm. um, uh, in in how they influence their parents mm -hmm. to say, "Dad or mom, you can do this," or "Why don't we help you make a CV?" Very interesting. Uh, and and literally everybody talks about how my daughter or my son helps. The other realization, um, and you have both a daughter and a son, and I have two boys. The one big learning I've had, and, and my apologies to 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 all the men on the call, but women just tend to care more about their parents or daughters tend to care more about their parents than the sons do. I'm not saying sons don't care. The sons care differently mm -hmm. than the daughters do. Daughters have a much more emotional connect and well-being connect mm -hmm. with their parents. The son have a much, the sons have a much more practical approach to helping their parents. Yeah, don't worry, I will take care of it. Right? That's the mm -hmm. son attitude. That's my attitude. Whereas the daughter is like, no, no, you have to exercise. No, no, you have to use your brain. Mm -hmm. No, no, go out and do this. Understand. I think that's, uh, so that's one big, and, and in, interestingly, most of my team are actually women. And I realized that almost everybody in our team has someone or the other who is, who has seen retirement, parents or grandparents. And mm. I've also, I think we have some people in our team who are already over the age of 60, because if I have to prove to the world that, look, there is value here, you know, why can't I myself employ people who are over the age of 60? And it, I'm telling you, it works. I, mm. There is no doubt in my mind. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, uh, but anyway. Let, let's pause and maybe there, there are a few questions that have come in in the in the box uh, for some of the others who have not typed. Uh, you you might want to do that now. We'll just take a pause for a few minutes and address some of these. Uh, I think there, there's one question here which which actually says, Neeraj, in your case, you took a sabbatical and you sort of in a way planned the transition for yourself. But in some cases, uh, there might be an unfortunate event of layoff or uh, somebody losing the job. Any, uh, you know, just to make it very tactical, you know, uh, if you're if you're late fifties or mid fifties and and you lose the job, then what what are some of the uh, baby steps you would recommend for those people to to move forward? Yes, yeah, subset. By the way, you come to wisdomcircle.com. I think we what we realize is we are solving for the above fifty, and what we said is we we, we want to solve for people in three areas. One is on domain expertise. The other one is actually education. We realize that a lot of them want to teach. Uh, mm. And all of us have not got a... So in fact, you should... And, and Deepak, you're an expert in transitions much more. And I unfortunately don't know how to answer this question. And maybe you can. Um, but it is not easy, right? I think, you mm. know, going through any transition, especially if it's the post transition, um, you know, it's not easy. But I think it's also, it's also about calibration. So you, you mm. mentioned that, you know, I had worked in the oil and gas industry. So I'll give you an oil and gas industry story. So I joined the oil and gas industry and this is almost 30 years ago. My my first boss told me, he said, Neeraj, let me tell you one thing about the oil and gas industry. If you've not lost your job at least three times in your career, you've not had a career. Hmm. Hmm. Right? Which essentially sort of grounded us to say, Deko, cyclical market hai, upar niche jata hai, you will lose your job one day. Hmm. Right? So therefore plan for it, save for it. And when shit happens, Take your time and you will come on back again because the market. So, and in a way, we all got conditioned to that. I even remember when every time the oil price would drop, I would clear out my office and take stuff home. I said, yeah, come here, and then you would always start thinking, aage padna hai, aage kuch karna hai. So 
I think a lot of it is how we individually deal with it. It's not easy. I think right now mm. we can see it with a lot of our friends and what they're dealing with in the tech sector and the and the and the downturn there. I think my only sort of suggestion is, yeah, look, you know, shit happens. Um, you just need to. So bigger point is financially, you should make sure you always have savings to last you, and always continue to learn something or do something. And because it's very easy to go down the depression route. Like, mm-hmm. why did it happen to me? Is it right? And, and it does happen. And unfortunately. you know again a lot of us i think you can only understand it if you gone through it yourself it's very easy to give advice mm. uh, but i think the person who's going through it all is and the only thing i can say is look come to businesscircle.com i think we, we we have opportunities you know find something part time for two months three months while you while you look for a full time job mm. um Hmm. Anything you want to add deepak i think you you know no, i think that's uh, you're right i think it's it's never easy as you said uh, uh losing a job uh is is never easy whether you're in your 20s or 30s or 50s but you're right i think somewhere recognizing that's the way of life and uh, and sort of at least uh, i think very often people see that as a take it personally see sometimes these things are events which are happening much beyond our control right which some, sometimes i find that people uh, uh, let these e- events sort of get to their self worth which then starts a downward spiral right so to some extent sort of decoupling sort of the macro from what's happening with you and sort of still okay. noting that you have agency right i think that that often is quite key i find uh, you know, and you're right i think you know see in any of this i think this whole piece around depression in fact one of the things you know a lot of people ask me about why i'm doing what i'm doing and when i tell people it's a for profit company with a social purpose i think this you know depression dementia alzheimer's a lot of it happens because of you know either these infection points that we go through along with just you know again there is the brain chemistry part which i don't want to get into just now but um and therefore what i tell people is you know we are in the business of trying to reduce the rate of cognitive decline in the world right mm. and, and that's the business we are in therefore just making sure that all of us not only just have a longer life but we live well so this this mm. living well versus having a life right which is so this whole combination and then of course a lot of this is about biological age and um, you know um, your what is that the jo bhi calendar age jo bhi kehte hain ha mm-hmm. uh, chronological age uh, yeah. right so there's different between chronological and biological age there's a lot of interesting stuff happening in this field by the way there's for those of you who are interested there's a lot of biohacking stuff that's happening you know if you if you heard of metformin and and how metformin helps and there's some very so in fact if you read about this aging space and longevity space in our lifetimes we will see substantial changes which means people will live longer they will have healthier lives and if retirement still continues to be 58 or 60 or 62 i mean we are in for 30 to 40 years of life where we will be sitting thing up kya kare hmm right and this time affluence and now you see chat gpt ai all of this you know this whole thing so therefore the onus is on us as individuals to figure out how we are going to continue living meaningful life right and a lot of it is about purpose about giving back hmm. by the way to answer the other question what do we find we found that a lot of people mm-hmm. right by the way i'm not saying money is not important money is not the driver anymore money mm-hmm. still in fact we tell people you know please do not you know do volunteer stuff do not hire people just for the sake of mm-hmm. uh, you know because you're getting you know older people for and they work with you for free in fact we even tell people i said you know call it an honorarium call it uh, whatever but you know if you can't pay enough call it an honorarium but let them decide what they do with the money mm-hmm. right so mon- money and money is a function of respect True. So in fact, we keep, keep telling people we are solving for relevance and respect. Um, True. But and a lot of people want to give, right? So therefore, therefore, teaching and social impact work, while also leveraging your domain experience, I think those are sort of the the areas we are focusing on. Hmm. And uh, Satyam, who's one of the other listeners uh, to this conversation, he's he he asks once having stepped out of the corporate career track, how prudent is it to do a complete switch off? You spoke about the six month sabbatical. versus continuing to keep in touch with some work or the other even if it's few hours a week do you have a view uh, on uh, on that yeah, you know so first of all there is no one solution fits all right i think that's sort of a the idea is to keep your brain active a lot of us for example will say you know i've always wanted to x or y but you know for example if you have a public sector job or an arm force job you know you basically stuck in a in a in a system which you have to write out now when mm-hmm. you get off that system treadmill etc you have an option you can continue 
doing what you're learning or you can learn new stuff and go out and do something with it. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, this also then leads to this bigger phrase that uh, some of us have heard called the portfolio life. Yeah. Right? This is a very interesting notion. In fact, I'll give you a story. of So we, there's, there's one, uh, um, it's like somebody asked a gender neutral question on Turtle, but essentially the point is we're not solving for men, we're solving for everyone, uh, mm-hmm. men and women. Um, so the so there is this uh, friend of mine, and she's uh, so she the way she's broken up her week is for two days she works with a company that leverages her skill and gets paid at the in a way the rate at which uh, a prorated rate at which she worked before she retired. And the third day she actually spends in a uh, in a startup uh, where she gets paid less, but she's learning a lot more. The fourth day she wants to spend in a, she hasn't got that right role yet, but in social impact. Mm-hmm. I think I want to do something, give, she'll still get paid for it, but so we're trying to find a role for that. The fifth day she says, yeah, I need three days. I need Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because I need to manage my husband. And, uh, and, and I need to, you know, so, and, and she's happier. She's making less of money than what she reported, but you know, she's still making money, which means she's making enough money so that she doesn't have to dip into her savings to, uh, to continue living the kind of life that she's used to. But at the same time, is giving is 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 happier. In fact, I actually asked her. She said, "I'm actually happier now than I was when I was working full time." Because when you're working full time, you're thinking career, next job, next role, pay increase. And now I don't have to worry about any of that. And I love um, what you said because, in a way, it's a uh, it solves for a combination of uh, sharing some of the wisdom and the knowledge you have. There's a day of learning, so that you're you're also staying relevant for the future. And there's one around impact. So in a way, as you think about the portfolio, okay. also maybe uh, thinking about what are the different pieces that you're trying to solve uh, and ensuring that maybe the maybe there's not one thing which will tick all these boxes, but you have the luxury of architecting. And, and we can do this right? now. Like, you know, if you think of what children could do before they worked, hmm. right? And what gave them joy? You know, our children are learning music, they're studying, they're sort of hmm. playing their games, et cetera. And then suddenly there's this period when you're working Maybe we've forgotten all that, hmm. right? Because we have to make a living, we have to take care of, and suddenly now you're in this phase, and by the way, this phase is only going to increase in time much more than even the time you work. So if hmm. you can construct a portfolio of life and a thing through it, which has to have a couple of elements, right? Which has to have an element as, as of learning and growing. Hmm. So the moment you stop learning and growing, it's a problem. The second is you should try and make money, right? This whole thing of doing everything for free, my free my karungi, it's not about that you can't do it, but it, it's a self-worth uh, experiment that we play on ourselves. Because what you want to do is, okay, I am worth something. Like my dad, I keep using my dad's example. Right? Retired today, even today, like, you know, Sagar Sahib, Chhat Padri, Amare, Gali Mein, can you come and have a look at the Chhat? And he'll say, he'll go, you know, the guy will actually give him chai, he'll be damn happy. Hmm. Right? So his self-worth is, is a chai, he's damn happy. Okay, he's 85. Hmm. But what I'm saying is, if someone is willing to give you in kind or something for the effort you're putting, take it. Hmm. Don't just say, uh, you know, this whole thing of I will volunteer and people will feel good about it. It's all crap. Sorry. It's all, I mean, yes, volunteering gives you, you know, satisfaction, but the other person doesn't, doesn't respect you as much. Yeah, true. Uh, if I may add to what you just said, right? I think uh, if I take the example of my father-in-law, he spent a long time in the army, retired as a brigadier. But now when I look at how he wakes up in the morning, he re- he's got, you know, he reads up on Afghanistan, he reads up on Russia, he reads up on Ukraine, he reads up on the US foreign affairs, and he's rather deeply passionate about geopolitics. And he tells me that he always wanted to study that, but somewhere, you know, job took over and, uh, you know, life happened. So I, I find that sort of tuning into what you're genuinely curious about and, uh, and sometimes, you absolutely have to do that. and sometimes the, the answer might lie way back in time, right? If you go back to, you might, you might say, I, I wish I'd done a undergrad in this field, a geo in, uh, in sort of political science or whatever, and there might be clues. So when I look at him, I, he says, yeah, 24 hours is not enough for me to consume. There's so much happening around the world. And uh, I find that deeply inspiring to, and which again and, comes back what you and I studied about mm-hmm. curiosity and sort of mm-hmm. uh, you and I sort of studied about. So keeping this curious brain working, no? I'll give you another mm-hmm. example. There's another friend mm-hmm. of mine who's, you know, a similar age and so he's retired and he invests. A lot of people, I think very interesting, right? So saying, yeah, savings there. When you ask people, Canada, I invest for a living. Mm-hmm. Now, here's a different example of investing for a living, right? This guy invests. One day he says, you know, I want to. So by the way, the, the three, four areas, so there's, you know, 
sustainability everybody talking about ai everybody talking about you know, crypto was last year not enough this year the, the third thing is about synthetic biology okay mm-hmm. so uh, so this guy says you know i'm going to invest in synthetic biology i'm like yeah synthetic biology kya hota hai so you know even i don't know but i'm taking a course at johns hopkins online because i am going to study so that i can become a better investor in investing in biotech slash synthetic biology companies okay like, yeah that's interesting and so now suddenly you know he is the one has any intelligent conversations in our social group so which has two points here number one you have to have a social group right if you are trying to mm. do stuff on your own this whole thing around friendship and if you look at that harvard mm. study on you know mm. think we all talk about you know the role of social connects and friends Mm-hmm. and the connected family that's another key part which again starts to happen again after 50 right i would not worry about my parents as much when i was younger than i worry about them now i wouldn't worry about connecting with my family as much younger than i worry about now think i suddenly want to talk to my cousins more i want to go out mm-hmm. and by the way there's nothing wrong mm-hmm. and the second part i think you know i used to always complain i mean my mom goes to kitty parties right or you know i would go to calcutta and my friends in calcutta i say i before jump back you know they all discussing politics but i think what you realize is again to your earlier point right history and how things have evolved a lot of our social structures and of course spirituality is another one have evolved to keep our brains working right so social connect relevance um you know making sure as you age you are surrounded by people who respect each other and respect you again these are the basic things that mm. we, we are solving for hmm I want to take another question for another couple of questions and then we'll march forward uh, neeraj there's a question from nambi and he says i got a job in a startup at 57 but the role was based on what i did my late 30s and 40s and i realize i'm unable unable to perform at the same level of energy how do you choose the right role in late 50s if i may add another question that's occurring to me as i read his mm. um you spoke about the portfolio life right uh, what's your sense of full time jobs uh emerging for these kinds of people or is it uh, uh, by default portfolio life that's that's sort of the feasible option at that phase of life so it's a interesting question i i think so what we are trying to solve for is in fact what i realize we are not solving for full time we don't want to solve for full time although there are companies coming to our uh platform and posting full time roles but here's the difference hmm Aug- and i'll answer nambi's question also in a minute um mm-hmm. One other thing, so you know, the bigger challenge is who's going to hire people mm. in this age, right? And because everybody mm. in this age is a problem. So the question we are asking organizations are: tell us about a problem you have for which you do not have resources or you don't have skills. Mm. And then, then they start thinking, "Hey, hi, you know, we wanted to get this project done. Uh, can you help us find somebody who can do this for three months, six months, get it started, and then hand over?" Or someone says, "You know." Uh, like I'll give you an example. So, and all kinds of. I mean, I I'm surprised by if you ask the right question, the kind of roles that emerge. You know, someone came. Oh, you know, we're a non-profit. Uh, we would love to hire a full-time CFO, but we can't afford one. Can you help us find somebody who can give us two days a week? Right, mm-hmm. and is a full-time CFO, and we'll get the. So suddenly, this whole, in fact, we call it two in the role. In fact, one of my friends actually coined this word, saying, "Yeah, someone else is executing, but you have somebody above them who's actually guiding them." and right? so those mm. kind of roles work very well um mm. for organizations and and also temporary help so for example one organization reached out to saying look we have a role um in europe where we want somebody to go in for one year to help us with the transformation mm. and then we sort of probed a little deeper and we realized organizations sometimes don't want to manage careers of see one of the things they worry about when they hire people who are older is yeah we don't want, we don't have to manage their careers anymore and when you tell them that look it's not about careers anymore you know it's about come in do some work you know for example one company we started to looking at to find somebody for a two year intervention on process improvement where someone who has done process improvement in their life can help guide a team of four or five people and they can work at the pace that they want to three days mm-hmm. a week four days a week and there's suddenly lots of people who are applying and mm-hmm. we said acha that's interesting and the people are like yeah if i get three days a week in a city i want to live in and i can manage people something i've done i don't worry about career and i get paid Right, so mm-hmm. those things sort of check the box. Um, so we have all these very interesting. You know, one company so now answering um, Amit's question, right? On on startup, look, it's a it's a difficult one. I think you need to take the call. My only thing is, don't try again. It's the tortoise and the hare story, right? Mm-hmm. Don't try and compete with the hare, mm-hmm. right? Because you know, if the job requires you to run, run fast, um, you can prove to yourself that you will do it. But you know what? 
the 25 year old will do it much better if it's a running job so you have to figure out the wisdom slash pure execution balance hmm right and therefore picking a role which has a higher requirement of your know, stuff that you've done that you can leverage while you continue to learn with someone else who's in that role who's good at execution so i'll give you another example right so this is a great uh, a great point maybe uh, i guess the, every role has a wisdom quotient and an action quotient so just ensuring that uh, you find roles which have the which are not disproportionately yeah, higher higher mm. 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 sorry i uh, you were you were no, going to no no the similar so it's like you know this uh, the same person i was talking about who got a role in a startup and who got a role in in a company mm-hmm. so you know she she went she is in a marketing role and she goes to the market the startup in marketing and and suddenly she realizes that she being asked to do you know can you make a copy you know like literally a marketing copy for this or can you do this so she suddenly realizes that she's sort of gotten from gone away from the the, the guidance and the wisdom to tactical execution and action and she came back and said yaar nahi ho raha mere se so therefore i think uh, abhi i think what i'll say is make sure that you are picking a role where there is at least somebody who can supplement your action right because otherwise as you get older and if you are required to do everything go powerpoint banao presentation banao wo nahi hota yaar i think at this stage you are like yaar ho gaya wo i can't do all this stuff that i did when i was you know as you said 30 40 years old hmm. um and if it's not working there's nothing stopping you from asking your manager your company says i say look at this is what i'm good at i'm not good at this this is not the best use of my time um and and again you know of course in your own equation as i say you have to be clear why you're doing it right in some cases you know if you're doing it because we need the the compensation to sustain and for the other financial priorities we have then you you know eat the bullet and you sort of do what you have to do right hmm. and i love the the point you make about two in a box in a way even from a company's perspective i guess seeing this as a combination of wisdom and action maybe just like sometimes we talk about two in a box when it comes to co ceo or leadership levels even in terms of deriving value from the wisdom generated with gen as you say uh sort of complementing them with uh somebody who's high on action and also brings a different perspective so in a way i guess there's also uh reverse mentoring happening right there's so much that we in our 40s 50s and 60s can learn right. from the 20s right people of the 20s so i guess it's a, it's a, it's an interesting thought so you know by the way every single person i tell what i'm doing the first question they ask me is have you seen the movie intern hmm. so for those of you who not seen it please see it because that you know that sort of thing and by the way for those of you who don't know there's a intern remake that's happening with amitabh bachchan and deepika padukone that will come out later this year we're well, trying to figure out if we can get a get a free insert into the movie but it's damn expensive i think so we we i spoke to the producer i said yaar dekho hamara naam dal de to bhi kare wo for those of you who've seen sharma ji namkeen which is the rishi kapoor's last movie yes and that's about retirement uh, so there's a lot of in fact i you know what it was interesting uh, when sharma ji namkeen came out i said you know let me go talk to amazon prime and see if they will if he can partner with uh, you know on the distribution of sarvaji and he we didn't have the money right start up so i spoke to the head of the, uh, the person who was leading amazon prime saying you know neeraj the interesting part is don't worry because amazon prime is making all our future pipeline is targeted at this segment because these are the guys who watch the tv the most so you know tv we watch a lot thanks in whatsapp so if you really want to be different stop good mornings on whatsapp <laughs> uh, and you know and learn something and and you know he have watch by the way i tell my dad you should watch netflix but watch intelligent stuff don't mm. watch dumb stuff only mm. sometimes by the way my brother the doctor he keeps telling me he says, you know occasionally you should watch dumb stuff because it kind of lets you relax mm-hmm. right so you can't mm. always have your brain working either so anyway got it just some picking up another question from, from venkatesh huh? um who's typed in uh, if i sort of paraphrase what he's asking he's saying you know is there a certain science to what sort of roles we try for example is there a psychometric assessment or is there some sort of a uh, yeah. uh, instrument that uh, sort of helps uh, helps us find the right direction when we are in this phase no i don't think well, first of all thank you for bringing that up and uh, so we are in the process of actually developing one because we, we actually call it turtle types okay uh, so using our same turtle logic and uh, but you know i think it's a very very good question man it's a very insightful question because not not a lot of people ask this question Mm. because not all of us fit and this again comes back to nambi's question also earlier right is what am i suited best for uh, and i think deepak you know this because you you've been a, a assessor for such a long time and you kind of know the psychometric piece of it because not everybody fits every role true so i think there is the side behind it and i think you probably better suited to answer this question than i am 
I think uh, my empirical observation area of working with people, not everybody I work with falls in this age category, but uh, I find that psychometric sometimes is like a blood test and a comprehensive health checkup, right? It's sort of one of the one of the elements. But I I ask people to get outside and feedback. You know, I I find that there are two lines of inquiry which are significantly uh, uh, you know underdone. One is sort of really reflecting on what gives you joy and what gives you happiness. Very often I find. the whole corporate workplace is focused on strengths and development areas but doesn't really give you feedback on you know when are you when do you experience a high when do you experience a low what frustrates you so sort of trying to tune into that through reflection and asking people around and second also is outside in um very often just a simple question of asking a few people uh, you know you know me what is a canvas where someone like me will flourish so when i'm working with a leader sometimes when i ask that question very often interesting uh, insights evolve right let me let me share an example from the podcast you know one of the people i spoke to was a gentleman called atul kasbekar who's a well known photographer in bollywood and he's known okay. for the kingfisher calendar and so on and he started producing movies at some point and i said how did that transition from you know for photography to producing happen and he said when i spoke to a a family a mentor he said you seem like a a uh, uh, somebody who can, who people can trust in an industry that's otherwise quite murky so why don't you try and become the platform on which people come and collaborate and he said okay platform and he said that's that's not something that i would have attributed to myself very often i find that outside in feedback people look at you very differently from how you look at yourself but to your point i think uh, supplementing a psychometric something like what you're developing turtle type with a little bit of a process of inquiry and reflection it's not just about getting a job right i think it's this phase of life it's about finding and meaning and finding what talk about heart uh, and i think the other thought but you know the joy and happiness piece yeah because you know my point is you know we all strive for this joy and happiness piece and now we're getting older and we're still sort of you know so if we um, let that sort of question is one of the first question yeah am i going to be happy doing this hmm. you know and some of us don't want to take crap from people anymore You know, like so. And if you get a boss who's this sort of twenty-five year old who's going to give you crap, you really want it. Mm. You know, so I think sometimes it's, it's, it's you know the equation is actually much simpler than 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 what we because in our early years we actually have to we you know we have to think about <coughs> what boss is saying because it it, it leads to uh, you know our evaluation. It leads to whether how much pay raise you're going to get. It leads to a lot of this. And this age, I think once you cross sixty, you're like, yeah, okay, I'm going to be so. Anyway, um, I, I'm maybe being a little exaggerating, but you know the the happiest people I know are the ones as you define them. I right? do sort of understand themselves better through this, uh, you know, outside in inquiry and 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 just knowing what gives them joy. Sure. Very well said, Deepak. And and if I may build on on that point, <clears throat> another metaphor that I find useful both for my reflection on my journey also is. Uh, there's a professor called Dan Cable in London Business School who uses the concept of a highlights reel. He says, just like uh, if you watched a football mm-hmm. game, the next day you see a three-minute highlight reel to see what are the goals that Lionel Messi or Mbappe go- scored. So imagine if you created a highlights reel of your life, right? The first fifty years. What are the few scenes or what are the few moments you'd put on that highlights reel? Very often, those moments that you would put, huh? you would put, or even you can crowdsource it, right? Uh, he says that actually even. ask and let that be a gift that uh, you give yourself a gift of feedback and a gift of outside in uh, highlights feedback but uh, i i you're right i think uh, very very often i, I find that people yeah. embark on this as a job to be done but actually it's a it's a sort of a journey of self awareness and the more we can spend time mm-hmm. on that i think uh, greater the odds of landing something that's purposeful and meaningful um Let, let's come back to financial stability i think uh, one of the one of the listeners says that uh, do you have any rules of thumb uh, again it, it it's it sort of uh, money i guess has a different role plays a different role in different people's lives so it's hugely contextual but among uh, the various sources of literature koi koi rule of thumb nahi so usme i can tell you is i tried a hell of a lot man i mm-hmm. asked every single friend of mine mm-hmm. who had retired i said how much is enough Hmm. Nobody had hmm. an answer. Okay, nobody had an answer that made sense to me. Hmm. So, so, and and then when I did my own calculation, I realized at the end it is your decision. Here are the basic things, right? Make sure that whatever you have, you're investing properly. 
Mm. And it's and it's growing faster than your expenses are taking out because yeah, inflation is going to kill things, right? So mm. just make sure that the best answer someone has given me is, I don't want to dip into my savings, and therefore if I can supplement my my, my expenses, my basic expenses while maintaining my savings, for which I you know plan for for my children's education, their wedding, you know a fancy car, whatever. That balance works better, but therefore this whole notion of I have enough, I don't want more. I mean that happens when you have your millions of dollars. But you know, again, there is no answer. Mm-hmm. Even the millions of dollars people I have spoken to, even they are not happy. They're like, "Arey, yar, sir, two million hai. Five million hote to I would have been even happier." No, I understand. I have met people who have a hundred million who are not happy. They're like, "Yar, hundred million hai, but kalko if I if there's some longevity act that comes out which costs more than that, then how will I afford it?" No, I. You know, so it's all you have to decide. At the end, we all can, you know, cut down costs if we want to. Like my my parents live in a house where they rent a top floor for eight thousand rupees a month. Hmm. Right. So there is no, you know, I live in a house which is much more uh, elaborate than that. Uh, hmm. In fact, I have a story. Uh, I remember I was in Cup Parade when we had first moved to the Gaon Center. Right. So I used to pay this. A ridiculous amount of rent. But luckily, the company afforded me. Uh, so my mother asked me, "Says, beta, how much rent do you pay?" So I said, "Mom, how much rent do I pay?" So she divided by that that monthly rent. I told her by twelve, and then she told me, "Beta, it's very expensive." You know, so what are you working on? Because you're not doing this mafioso drug stuff, right? Because who can afford rent like this? And I I didn't have the courage to tell her that, Mom, if I divide it by twelve, it's not it's a monthly rent. So anyway, so there is no end. देखो सब एक साथ जयपुर मूव हो जाते हैं यू नो वही एक ही अपार्टमेंट कॉम्प्लेक्स में वो लेंगे गोल्फ खेलेंगे थोड़ा काम करेंगे और इकट्ठे रहेंगे और रेंटल कॉस्ट ड्रॉप Yeah, because in in the longevity aging space, you know, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. So, for example, there's the Stanford Center for Longevity, right? Mm-hmm. Which is a, and they even have a, a podcast called the Century Lives, which a friend of mine runs. And um, so, there's some very eclectic things that are going on. In fact, I had this, uh, and actually, so there's a very interesting book called Stupid Things I Want to Do When I Get Old. इंटरेस्टिंग um there's there's a field called epigenetics which is quite up and coming there's uh, mm-hmm. a few professors out of stanford that are sort of working on the field um there is again you know a, a standard book is the second mountain mm. i think it's one of the brooks brothers that i think is david brooks that david wrote brooks. that book correct ha david brooks and you you've interviewed i think you've interviewed one not, of the you he's been on on my two interview list on the podcast but not yet but uh, But yeah, I think some of the. In fact, you probably have better books. I think there's that one chap you interviewed who's done. I think one one book from my my the transition yeah, wali, na? Yeah, the there's one uh, by a gentleman called Lloyd Reeb, who runs uh, hmm. who's written a book called From Success to Significance, which uh, which is specifically catering to people who achieve a certain level of success, like the second mountain that you talk about. It's really saying, you know, you achieved a lot for yourself. But now, then, how do you really move to a life of impact, and what does it mean? What are some of the shifts in identity? What are some of the experiments you need to do? I think the uh, if there's one other thing I would highlight, which probably we didn't speak about explicitly in our conversation, Neeraj, is I find that people need to experiment a bit more. Very often, people expect answers on a platter, 
you know, uh, but mm-hmm. I find that especially when we move into our 40s, 50s and 60s, the more micro experiments we can do and, and through those experiments discover where we see energy, where we see fit, where we see perceived respect, uh, I think the greater the odds. Otherwise, expecting for her job and just showing up there. Uh, you know, I, I find that also, I mean, the other metaphor that has stayed with me is early on in our life, we are like uh, moldable clay, right? Uh, but later in life, we are much more like Lego, uh, sort of hard blocks with a certain shape. So for one job to tick many boxes is is sort of unfair. So we need to sort of architect those set of micro choices and that will only come through experimentation. So that's the only other thing I might add that I've learned from some of the conversations. Yeah, I think it's a very, uh, and a couple of suggestions on, I think Satin has a suggestion on a book in the, this thing where he talks about changing gear by Jan Hall and John Stokes. This is an interesting book. I think there's a question on the role of friends, um, which is a very tricky one, actually. I think, and I honestly, I don't know who's asked that question, but, um, but you know, these are all, you know, there's no right answer for any of this, right? I think it mm-hmm. all comes back to people you trust. There's a whole trust element. And the role of family is important. I think in family also, we've seen ups and downs based on uh, who's in the family and who isn't and, and how they mm-hmm. think about it. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, I, I, the thing is, read, uh, listen, stay active. Um, you know, and and make sure that first, you know, you're reducing your rate of cognitive decline. By the way, cognitive decline is going to hit all of us. Right, mm. it's happening. Whether you like it or that's the brain science, that's brain chemistry. Right, all we can do is delay that. Mm. Right, and by and if we live longer, we are all going to get it. And the only way you can delay it is to make sure that you're doing, you're bringing in the joy to the chemistry, you're bringing in, um, you know, you're, you're bringing, you're creating new neurons. This is again, all the neurons are firing more because you're learning more stuff. So the mm. two simple things that we picked up at Deepak, you and I have talked about it is learning a new language, uh, learning a new musical instrument. You know, these are amazing. Just learning a new musical instrument and learning a new language. Mm. I, it can actually, in my calculation, delay your cognitive decline by three to five years. Just this, this these two things. Wow, wow. Now I know I think a musician. Yeah. Also, I think your, I think your whole family are musicians. So, so you are okay, in spite of having not having enough <laughs> hair. I think you still, you still, your your brain is going to be fine. I think uh, apart from uh, sort of the neurons firing, I think music also sort of brings a certain level of joy. Um, which I think feeds the soul. You know, I, I go back to Ken Robinson, who actually said, you know, music touches parts of the soul that words don't. And and I think I truly believe in that. Um, Neeraj, as we wrap up uh, back to Wisdom Circle, how can people uh, stay engaged with your mission? Um, uh, you know, any any final thoughts uh, before we wrap up? You know, no, no, thank you for that. I, I think, look, we are... so. Th- a lot of us know that we need this help. So first, if you mm-hmm. if you are in your transition and you you know of course come to our platform and 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 sign up and but I think the more important help is help create opportunities for people at this age. I think that's that's the part where we I think collectively have to help each other because it's like and that's the only way to reduce this ageism impact in your own organizations. Make sure that you give opportunities uh, to people even if it's part time because you you know the amount of um, goodness that you're creating by mm. giving somebody a meaningful thing to do, even if it doesn't mm. pay them, but make sure you respect them. Mm. Right. And I said, therefore, you know, I keep saying relevance and respect as people get older, whether it's in your family, et cetera, make sure the respect part of it, make sure your HR understands that, you know, just because you're old doesn't mean, you know, and by the way, all of us, if you get old, we speak a lot, right. And we know all that, right. We know when people get older, they repeat stories, they report, repeat their jokes, they, re- they speak, but it's okay. We'll all, we're all going to do it, right? But give them the, the, the wits to sort of be that while helping them focus um, and, and create those opportunities. Tell your friends to create opportunities. If someone's running organizations, ask them, look, why can't you hire someone who's uh, a little older but can give you two days a week? Uh, mm. Uh, mm. that, that's where I think the world needs more help with creating more opportunities. Yeah? Lovely. On that note, uh, Neeraj, thank you so much for uh, sharing your wisdom with us. The very first play to oh, P- P2P5 side chat. Thank my, you. My, and thank you. Thank you for doing this. This is, uh, uh, it's been lovely chatting, Deepak, as always. Yeah. Likewise.